He has ran successful campaigns here in South Carolina, from Elizabeth Colbert Bush to Peter Tecklenburg to Rodney Williams on Tulsa City Council. Now, Chris Crowbert is running Bernie Sanders' campaign here in South Carolina. In this special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups, I sit down with him one-on-one. -on -one. Let's address the obvious, the Fox Business debate last night. Yeah. As you know, um, and I watched it too, but I'm sure you did. Yeah. But it was basically about foreign policy and obviously the economy. And I'm wondering, what would Bernie Sanders say about this particular debate? I mean, we've always had a great presence on Twitter and on Facebook when right. those debates go on. And, you know, the Senator's been very clear that, you know, there's no one in the Republican Party that's going to actually do the things that need to get done in order to continually make this country better. And, you know, it's not just Syria and it's not just the things that we're discussing in this debate. It's about $15 an hour minimum wage that would greatly impact South Carolinians. It's about getting health care to all people, which would, again, greatly, you know, make life better for so many South Carolinians across the state. We know we struggle with Medicaid expansion, things of that nature. So, um, you know, I look at him completely in a different league of anyone in that party. Um, and I think if he had the opportunity to run against him, and all the polls have shown, uh, he would defeat all of them uh, sizably. So, you know, we feel in a head-to-head -head battle we'd be great against them. And obviously, um, it's a little bit of a circus, the Republican debates. Okay. Uh, so you just kind of almost watch his entertainment at this point. But you know, one of those guys would be the nominee, uh, maybe in a female with uh, Carly Fiorina uh, for their party. So obviously going to you know listen to what they have to say, but uh, realize that we we feel like we're stronger on the issues. We feel like we have you know the greatest grassroots movement uh, in the country right now, and we're just going to take advantage of that. And speaking of wages, as you know, while the Republicans were getting ready for a debate in Milwaukee, Bernie Sanders is actually in D.C. fighting for wages. Right, right. You know, I mean, we stood up, and he stood up again and said $15 an hour minimum wage. Uh, you know, fast food workers across the country have been striking for that for right. months now. They stood out again. Um, and it's just something that he's going to continually fight for and continually stand for. Um, it's something that he stood for for 30 years, you know, uh, being the mayor of Burlington, the Please. congressman from the state of Vermont, uh, senator in the state of Vermont, and, you know, standing up for people for, where, for quality minimum wage or quality uh, way of life is something that that's just who he is. That's what he stands for. He's going to continue to do that. And let me talk to you about the polls. A Monmouth uh, University poll has Hillary Clinton with a strong lead here in South Carolina. It's 69% to Bernie Sanders 21%. And when it comes to African American voters, she actually is leading 77% to Sanders 12%. And I'm wondering, what does this particular poll tell you? One of the things that people aren't talking about in the poll is that 66% of the people in that poll are still not fully decided on who they want to vote for at this point. Okay. There might be a soft support for Clinton, and they also don't know a lot about the senator. Um, you know, that's one of the things I think is important in our uh, program that we're trying to run down here, is that we're trying to continually educate people, trying to educate people that he's spent a lifetime fighting institutional racism, that he's fought for civil rights for people for the last 30 years, that he's fought for health care for people for the last 30 years. Okay. If you look at his record from what he's done as an elected official to now, uh, I don't think there's any question where that he's the strongest on the issues. I just think we've got to have you know more time to communicate with people. We're growing our organization continually, uh, not just with volunteers, but with full-time staff. And I think that that expansion of our program, along with continually uh, communicating with African Americans on radio and other ways we're going to do it, is going to help us uh, you know, build a stronger name ID. I mean, Hillary Clinton's been coming down here for a long time uh, and with her husband and then, you know, as herself, as Secretary of State. And, you know, for us, it's just an opportunity for us to continue to communicate with people, okay. teach more people about who the senator is. And the more people, they, the more that, that they learn about the senator, the more engaged they want to get in our campaign, the more they want to find out about him. Um, that's why our rallies have been so big. We went to Aiken, South Carolina this last Sunday. We had 1,400 people. Uh, and we went to Sumter, South Carolina, we had almost 800 people. I mean, we've had extremely good crowds at these, and you know, we've gained a lot of volunteer support from those, we've been able to educate a lot of people from those, and we're going to continue to do that. And let me touch on the obvious, because you mentioned this a few minutes ago, but who is Bernie Sanders? <sighs> Bernie Sanders, I think, is you know, one of the great senators in this country. Uh, and what he's done over the last 30 years as a mayor of Burlington, Burlington to one of the country's best cities. Uh, to being a United States congressman from Vermont and you know standing up and fighting for working families and now is the US senator from Vermont who's continually fought against the big banks and the continual corruption that takes a, a place in Washington with the increase in corporate dollars in the campaigns um, he had an eight and a half hour no really for the speech that's one of the things that he was known for he had an eight and a half hour filibuster in the Senate where he talked about 
you know, how this country is in a place to where it is eventually, if we don't make decisions, if we don't make changes, and if we don't have the revolution of people across this country that stand up and say enough is enough, and I'm not going to take the fact that very wealthy people in this country are going to continue to control, control our system. The new money in this country, the majority of it is going to the top 1%, one one-tenth of 1%, and that's what he fights for. And he's fighting for every, every working day, uh, working class people every day. And, you know, he's an extremely, you know, extremely hard person that's going to fight f continually for the people of this country. And that's what he's done for the last 30 years. The MSNBC Democratic Forum, it was held Friday night in Rock Hill at Wondrow University, hosted by Rachel Maddow. And it was really a one-on-one -on -one interview with the candidates. Mm -hmm. And Bernie was there as well. And I'm wondering, what letter grade would you give him as far as performance? Oh, I think he was an A. I think it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, you know, I think he was spectacular in the first debate. I think he won the first debate as well. Um, he, we were able to see a little bit more of a personal side of him, um, but he was very clear on where he stands on the issues. Okay. And I think that he was straight up and he was intense as he normally is. I thought it was spectacular. I think there was no question that you could give him an A. And you know he's he's gonna. We have another debate coming up on Saturday. CBS. Yep. Yeah, uh, in Des Moines, and then in January he'll be here right. for a debate. So we're really excited about that. Um, but he's a great debater. Uh, he's very straight up with where he is on the issues, and we thought he did an outstanding job. Uh, the New Hampshire primary filing. Uh, you know, I was watching a YouTube clip of that mm -hmm. this past weekend, and I actually saw a huge crowd of people. Yeah. And I he says something very interesting that I think is very uh, telling right now. He says, "Quote." This country needs a political revolution. So let me ask you the obvious. How would that happen if he becomes president? In order for this campaign to work, in order for that campaign to, you know, the, what the political revolution is, you know, it's not just people coming to the polls and voting and then going away. Right. It's about being involved civically engaged in, in our process. I think that a lot of people feel that, well, if I go to the polls and vote or if I volunteer for a campaign and I get this person elected, then things will automatically happen. We need people that are organized and developing a structure through organization that we can actually go out and communicate with people about what our issues are. Okay. Communicate with our state legislators and our federally elected officials. And I think that what we're trying to do in South Carolina is trying to build up that organization. Okay. You know, it takes time because you need to build relationships with people. Sure. It's not just saying come to our office and make a bunch of phone calls. Um, it's about, you know, how are we going to make sure that we explain to people how we're going to change America and change the world through a political revolution of more civic engagement, of standing up for what we know is right, of making sure that we're strong on the issues and, and fighting for, you know, working class families and across this country, and I think we're going to do that. Speaking of issues, describe to me the following one word, veterans. For Bernie Sanders on veterans, yes. you know, he's someone that's been strong on veterans issues forever. Uh, he was on the Veterans Administration okay. uh, when he was in, in, as a member of the United States Senate. Um, he's in, he marched in the, uh, he marched in the uh, Veterans Parade right. uh, in Lebanon today. Right. And, uh, you know, he's the strongest person on veterans issues. Voter suppression. He had a statement the other day about how, you know, sad this has been on how these laws are suppressing our votes throughout this country and we need to turn these things around. Gridlock in Congress. I mean, where do you want to start? <laughs> I mean, for you know, it's it, Congress is more and more being controlled by people with big money, and the corporations, from the Koch brothers to you know Sheldon Adelson, these people have continually controlled, you know, more and more, taken more control of Congress uh, through super PACs and things like that. And you know, the fact that he is the only candidate in, on our party right now that does not have a super PAC. That's what he said. Um, he does not, and you know, he does not agree that you know big money should be influencing politics. Unfortunately, it's happening right now. Hillary's emails. You know, I think her line was, I think his line was, you know, they're sick and tired of hearing of the damn emails. He said that in the first <laughs> debate. First debate right? Yeah, he said in the first debate. So I, I think, you know, I mean, I, look, I mean, people are going to look at those emails and kind of make their own conclusions, but we want to talk about the issues. We want to talk about the things that are affecting working class people and, um, you know, whatever's going to be decided about those is going to be decided. But this is a, you know, this is a campaign about issues and we're going to continue to talk about them. Border security? <laughs> you know, I think that obviously our, you know, main thing is obviously we want to keep Americans safe, but at the same time, you know, the it's important that we don't we have an immigration policy that is fair, and I think that you know we have to kind of see how that goes. ISIS. I mean, I think when you're talking about what happens across in the Middle East in general, obviously what's happening across the Middle East, not just with ISIS, but with you know all kinds of chaos that's taking place right. over there. You know, he voted against the war in Iraq. Right. Uh, he's been a strong person in making sure that we're not putting Americans' lives in harm's way. Right. And I think that's a number one priority. 
Chris Crover, the campaign manager for Bernie Sanders. In one word. Oh man, in one word? That's hard to describe. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, we're, we're doing a great job down here, I think. We have a great team, uh, and you know, we're excited to see where this is going to go. We've got four months, and okay. you know, we're going to continue to educate people, and we're very excited about where we're going. That's awesome. Great. Well, Chris Crawford, it's so great talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you.